Did you see the guitar demo video that I did with Adam Ray of my Fiona SSS Turbo in Candy Apple Red? This is the introduction to a series that is gonna take you through the entire process in 15 episodes. The introduction to this series is going to capsulate everything that I do at the school that I teach electric guitar building. And I'm gonna take you through that entire process. It's a 16 week process at school. I'm gonna do 15 episodes after this introduction. And this will take you through everything that you need to know to build your own Stratocaster style guitar like my Fiona. It's reminding me of a song, but I think that was my Sharona. What I'm going to show you today is going to help you get on the right track with everything you need, parts, supplies, thought processes, in order to successfully complete a Stratocaster style guitar. However, I'm going to ask for a few minutes up front for a little venting, but I promise you this episode will be worth it. I have made a decision to never have ads put on any of my videos. And for a couple reasons. Number one, I'm doing this primarily for my students in school as a reference to something that they can refer back to either during class or after the semester is over. And I have no need to add advertisements to my instructional videos. Second to that, I just felt like I never wanted to take money from YouTube because I feel like I would become a slave to them, that I owe them something. Well, regardless of how I felt about that, YouTube just changed their policies where they are forcing advertisements on every single video that they want to. And in fact, just yesterday, I noticed when I'm watching my own video, I had an advertisement in front of it. Forcing ads onto my YouTube instructional videos seriously annoyed me. I was this close to just pulling all my videos off of YouTube and saying, that's it, I have no interest. However, okay, before you get too excited, I calmed down a little bit, and I realized that I'm still doing this for the students, and therefore there's still a benefit to the students, so I need to continue on. In fact, the reason that I'm doing this series on the Stratocaster is because my students have asked for it. They said, you've got this Telecaster series, uh, and you kind of go over the Strat in class, but it would be really nice if we had a Strat build series that we could also refer back to. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not against getting paid for the time that I put into things, like about the 10 hours of work it takes me to produce every 30-minute instructional video. In fact, the school pays me for my time that I spend with the students. So I have no problem with getting paid. But honestly, I would rather get paid by you Anyone out there who gets a benefit out of what I do rather than accepting money from YouTube. I have spent by far of my adult life as a pilot in the military. And there are things that I do when I agree to be part of the military that I have to accept. I have to accept being told where to be, when to be there, how to dress, where to go, how long to go there, things like that. But I accept that because I believe what I do is a service for the greater good. And agree with that or not, it doesn't matter. But to me, what I found is living a life that, of something that you believe in is much more valuable, no matter what it is, than living a life that goes through the motions and doesn't have any conviction to anything whatsoever. Because I willingly gave up a lot of my freedoms as I committed to the military, two things that I treasure the most is my personal freedom and my time. Which is why I said a couple years ago that I would only produce videos when I had something important to say because I'm not after just hearing my own voice. And if I had the time and the energy to do a good quality video. And I believe I have held true to that principle for the last couple years. Hopefully you've gotten benefit out of a lot of the videos I have done and I haven't pushed myself so far to the point that I go into a condition of burnout like I did two years ago. So I'm feeling pretty good about how things have been progressing. 
Because of the change of the YouTube agreement kind of forcing me to take ads onto my content, it has me looking for other options. And I may be looking at options where there's an educational site where I can host my, my training sessions and maybe it's subscription based, but something that gives me a little bit more personal freedom of what happens with my content. If you have a level of expertise in something like that, or you know of something, you've successfully produced something like that, let me know. I'm looking for ideas and I'm looking for help. Again, it all boils down to time, money, and the energy that I have to execute things. I will rarely say on any of my videos to subscribe to my channel, to hit the like, to check the bell, uh, all these other things. And I do that because it's here for you. If you want to participate, then you can willingly participate. But honestly, I don't wanna play the games of having to follow these certain rules and play nice according to YouTube's policies in order to gain favor with YouTube. Certainly, if you like the content, go ahead and click like. But what I like to see more is feedback. If you don't like the content, put feedback, a comment in there and say, I don't like this. This is what I'd rather have. This is what I'd like to see you do. I'd really appreciate if you do this. Or I like what you do, but can you add this at some point in time? I'd much rather see comments because that is human interaction taking place right there. If you like what I do and you want to support what I do, buy my templates. If you can't afford my templates, buy a set of my control knobs. They're the most amazing control knobs you'll ever see. If you don't know about them, look at my videos from last year. You'll see everything you need to know about them. And even though I'm passionate about guitars and I think building guitars is one of the most rewarding things that one can do, and I think everybody who has an interest in it should try it at some point in time, at least for the bucket list thing, but some of you may not do more than one guitar. It may not be for you in the end, okay? You may not get the pleasure and enjoyment. It may turn into frustration if it's not really working out the way you want it to. That's okay. If you enjoy instruments, you enjoy listening to instruments, you enjoy playing instruments, then that's what you should do. If you enjoy building instruments, that's what you should do. If you figure out that building instruments is not for you, but you enjoy playing them and you would like to play one of the best instruments that could ever be made for somebody, buy one for me. That support helps fund what I'm doing, not only in this video, but in other areas that probably you guys don't even know about yet. In the end, I would rather work for you than work for YouTube. That is my soapbox. Let's get into the meat and the potatoes of this introductory episode for a Stratocaster build series that is designed to emulate what exactly I teach in my classes live. I've got examples of all of my materials laid out in front of me and I'm gonna go through them. I may not cover every single option that might be available, but I'm gonna go through common decision-making options with you. If you have additional questions, leave a comment and I will try to answer any question in the comments uh, that comes up. Another thing that I'm gonna provide in order to help you get organized for this series and to properly execute this series is some customized versions of some of the products that I provide for my students. Number one is a parts list for a Stratocaster build, and I'm gonna go over most of this with you today, but I've got that in a document for you. I'm gonna go over by week, 15 weeks, and what are the lessons for each of those weeks and what we're gonna cover that document so that you can organize your time and be prepared for what's coming next. And a general outline of those 15 different weeks of classes in a packet that has space for you to take notes as you're watching your videos, just like my students will take notes in the class as I'm doing demonstrations, or at least I should say as they should be taking notes while I'm teaching and doing demonstrations within the class. It's a little bit of a fight sometimes, all right? But this helps you on building the next guitar and the next guitar and the next guitar, and then you start developing your own techniques from there. These three documents I have for each and every one of you, and there's only one thing that you need to do, and that is to ask for them. I am not gonna post them uh, in public, 
but if you send me an email to info at MaximumGuitarWorks.com or you go to my website and fill in the contact information um, or call me on the phone that you see listed on my website and you say, Steve, can you send me those Stratocaster build documents? I will email these documents to you with no other requirements. Does that sound fair? My goal is to, just like I help my students, is to help you be successful. And this organizational process is one thing that does help uh, the ultimate success. Now you need to start with your Yeti and your favorite beverage. I would recommend non-alcoholic beverage if you're going to be working with power tools. Let's go over the parts and material list. Let's get that going first. I'm just gonna go step by step uh, with this. Okay, first one is body blanks. Okay, body blanks can be purchased online from uh, guitar wood suppliers, or you can go down to your local hardwood store and you can purchase lumber. Okay, that's gonna be more cost effective in the end, but you may or may not have available to you uh, different species of wood that you want locally, depending upon where you live and what you have access to. Uh, one of the common ones that's used in the Stratocaster is alder. Alder is a very affordable wood, and it's generally found at any hardwood supply place. Now, I'm not saying home box store or anything like that. They're not going to have the wood that you need. You have to find a hardwood supply place. There's always ones no matter where you live, you might have to travel if you're remote, uh, but you can get there, you can get it, or you can order them online. Now, this particular one just happens to be a one piece, one solid piece of alder, okay, that I bought from my local um, hardwood supply place. It was a chunk of wood that was at least 13 inches wide. I knew I could make a whole body out of it, and so I bought it, and I've got several bodies that I'll get out of that one piece. Other options is you can use any wood that you have available. For instance, I've been wanting to make a guitar out of this for a while. This is leftover cutoffs of Honduran mahogany, black walnut, some poplar, from different bodies that I've already glued up together. Okay, you don't need a one piece. You could have a two-piece alder body, a three-piece, or in this case, a nine-piece body. And it's still going to build a very nice guitar. In this case, I'm going to use a bookmatch flame maple top to go on top of this butcher block body blank. Because I think the front needs to be dressed up a little bit more than that. All right, neck blanks. Neck blanks can be done the same way. The most common wood is your hard rock maple uh, for a Fender style guitar. So you can go to your local hardwood store, you can buy a chunk of wood that you can get enough out to make your neck. In this particular case, I purchased some blanks that were already made for me to approximate sizes that I need. Now these are actually oversized, I'm going to have to cut them down a little bit, uh, but this is a piece of roasted flame maple, maybe with a 3A type of flame to it, but that roasted and the stability of what we call torrified wood. It's roasted is, is, is a more descriptive name to it. It's put into a vacuum chamber with heat and that basically molecularly changes the structure of the cells and burns off the, the moisture and the sugars and closes the cells so that moisture cannot make the same impact of expansion and contraction uh, like um, wood that's not torrified. So I'm going to use this blank for one of my guitars. Um, on the other guitar I'm going to build, I'm going to build a non-roasted but highly, um, probably a 4A, maybe even borderline of a 5A curly maple um, piece of, of neck blank. And I'm going to use that because this is going to look just amazing. The next thing on the list is fretboard material. Now, typically the fretboards will come uh, like this if you buy a blank. This is Indian rosewood. The Indian rosewood here is a little bit under two and a half inches wide and 20 to 21 inches long, somewhere in that. And generally speaking, you want a finished product of a quarter inch. 
Some people sell quarter inch fretboards. I shy away from those. I look for more 5 16 so that I have the ability to joint an edge perfectly flat and get it ready to be used as a fretboard. This one that I'm gonna use on the roasted maple is actually a piece of another type of rosewood called Coca-Bola. Okay, and now this one I've already kind of machined out, um, so this won't go into the demonstration aspect of, of how we fret, of how we cut the fret slots and things like that, but that's just what I decided to use on this particular neck. You have choices when it comes down to nuts, okay, for the guitar. Um, you have synthetic materials and you have natural materials. The most common natural materials are bone, available in two different ways, either bleached or unbleached. Bleached are white. Unbleached are more of a uh, off-white, a tan uh, color. I love bone nuts. They, they, they are classic, they're timeless, um, and the unbleached ones have a natural lubrication property built into them. You don't need nut sauce if you use an unbleached bone nut. Now, certainly the, the Tusk brand or other type of synthetics are designed to have a more slippery um, component to them, but I think they're a little bit softer, and in the end, I think they do a fine job, but I don't think it's always the best solution. So pick and choose what you want, but here's what I do recommend, is you buy at least two if you're building one guitar because there's a high probability if you've never cut slots into a nut before that you're gonna mess up the first one. There's a learning process that takes place. So set yourself up for success by at least two of them. I have on my list, and I may remove it, called string ferrules. That's only if you're gonna use the fixed bridge. But for these Stratocaster builds, I'm gonna use a tremolo style uh, bridge. So we really don't need any ferrules. All right, string trees, string retainers for the headstock. This is something that you may want to get. Personally, I never use them. I use staggered tuners, and specifically staggered tuners from Hipshot. And the staggered tuners go from 21 millimeters to 20 millimeters to 19 millimeters, and they create the break angle that you need uh, that provides the tension so the strings don't pop out of the nut. Um, some people may still want trees, uh, but I prefer not to use them because I like a cleaner headstock. But that's on the list. If you uh, want to use them, you're going to need a set of uh, string retainers. For a Fender style guitar, you're going to need a very traditional neck plate. Now I laser engrave my neck plates. Actually, I laser and CNC. I laser the logo and then I use a diamond bit on the CNC to do the name and the serial number of the guitar just because I just like the way it looks. So I do that, but you're gonna need a neck plate for each guitar that you're gonna build. Now, if you like the lasering, there's plenty of places that'll do it for you, but again, if you want help with that and you want me to laser a neck plate for you and charge you the going rate for such a thing, I'll do it for you. Fret wire can be purchased in many different sizes, many different materials, and in different formats. You can buy them pre-cut, already bent to a certain radius, that's gonna match your fretboard. Uh, you can buy them in little longer sticks, but these have to be bent yourself. Uh, and then you can certainly buy them in even longer sticks um, where you can, two sticks, you can get pretty much an entire fret job on a guitar done. Now, I recommend if you haven't done a lot of guitar building before that you stick with the very basic nickel silver, or if you'd like to have gold frets for that accent, I, I recommend Evo Gold as a brand. Uh, that are really nice to work with, um, and it, it will give you all the results that you need. Now, I purely work with stainless steel frets because I believe the long-term benefit outweighs the short-term sacrifice of taking extra time and effort to level and crown and polish those frets. So that's what I do on my guitars. I would not recommend that for you if you're just beginning. You're gonna also need a truss rod. Now, you can get truss rods from many different places, I would recommend that you avoid the cheapest one you can find, okay? There's nothing worse than having a failed truss rod in a guitar that's already completed, okay? So spend a few extra dollars and get one with a higher quality. 
This particular one is, is, is stainless steel, very strong. I have them custom made to exactly the lengths that I want. Um, and I pretty much only use, unless requested otherwise, a spoke wheel style of truss rod because that's a personal preference of mine. I think it's a better solution. But use whatever you like the best, uh, but just invest in a little higher quality than the cheapest thing you can buy. You'll, you'll thank me later. Carbon fiber rods are an option. These happen to be 0.25 by 0.25, so it's pretty easy to route. Uh, these are hollow ones. If you watched a video I did of comparison of neck reinforcement, um, you'll see that there's a lot of different options out there and there's probably pros and cons, but I've settled on this one as being the lightest solution and weight versus strength, it can't be beat. And they're pretty affordable too. I buy an entire four foot long rod for, I don't know, seven, eight dollars, something like that, plus shipping. I can cut it into three 16 inch pieces and that's enough to reinforce the neck where I want the reinforcement to be. So therefore I can do one and a half guitars for less than $10. Okay, you're gonna need a pick guard. Now you can buy ones that are already cut out if you're just interested in saving some time, but I would highly recommend that you buy a piece of plastic, pick guard plastic, many places you can buy it from. Um, and, and I'm gonna take you through the process of making your own pick guards. That sets you up for success later on down the road if you're looking to do custom uh, projects with custom shapes and things like that, then you'll know how to make your own. A tremolo spring cover is optional. I generally make them for every guitar, but I don't install them because uh, I prefer it not to have it on there, but I include it just in case the buyer wants them. For standard configurations, you need your basic Switchcraft mono quarter inch plug. Jack. Okay, this is very simple. I don't know, they're three, four dollars a piece. Uh, pretty cost effective and it, this is the traditional solution. There are other options out there uh, that are a little higher priced. I use one that's pretty high end and it's more of a barrel jack that's specifically made for the audiophile industry. So I believe the materials and the construction is second to none. Uh, but this is all you need is your basic jack. Of course, if we're building a Strat, you're gonna want the traditional Strat jack plate. And you can buy those again everywhere. This one just happens to be uh, an authorized Fender Genuine uh, part, uh, but either way, I'm sure is perfectly fine. Okay, when we talk about a tremolo, um, again, there's good brands out there. Wilkinson is a good solid, uh, pretty affordable. Goto makes them. A um, lot of different companies um, make tremolo bridges for your guitar. Um, I typically use Hipshot. I like the quality of their products, um, and I think they're pretty affordable for the quality that you're getting. On this particular, at least one, or maybe even both of these builds, I'm actually going to try out a product I used on my previous Nelly guitars, or I'd say a company that I used on my Nelly guitars, but this is a different product. This is made by a company called Super V, and this is called the Blade Runner. Look it up, it looks pretty cool. So I ordered several of them to, to put on recent builds, and I'm gonna try them out and see what I think, and if I like them enough, I may standardize all my guitars on this product. It just so happens the company is located in Colorado Springs, about 45 minutes south of me, um, Colorado, and and I'd like to support in the local, the local companies whenever possible. And it looks like a very well-made uh, piece of hardware. So that's what I'm gonna go with on this particular build. Okay, pickups, you got a lot of choice. Your choices could be all three single coils, what I call my SSS uh, design for my Fiona guitars. Um, and certainly you can buy them in many places. I typically use Rio Grande, Lawler, bare knuckles, and I've even started using a new, a newer, smaller company. Again, I like supporting the little guy whenever I can get a chance, as long as the products are good. This is a company called Righteous Sound Pickups, okay, RSP. And, and this particular one has got this metal rim around the outside and an inset decorative piece, and I think it is really cool 
And with my capabilities of CNC and lasering, I believe, and, and I'm working with this company, with Josh um, of this company, to produce things for me unassembled so that I can make my own custom inset covers and apply those to his pickups and get the sound that I want, but also get the appearance that I want. So this is a, an offering that I'm gonna be branching into and I'm pretty excited about it. We could do a, probably a whole episode alone on their pickups, but uh, let's wait till I actually put them in one of my builds and then maybe we'll do that. Certainly you can use the standard Seymour Duncans, DiMarzio, um, there's many companies. In fact, if you're on a, a strict budget, uh, go to Guitar Fetish. I have used their pickups before. I have played guitars with their pickups installed and I've never been disappointed by the sound and they're very cost effective. So that's an option. Uh, potentiometers, I like CTS. I also like Borns. Um, there's other ones that I, I'm kind of forced to use because I need a certain specification that I can't find anywhere else. Uh, but these two companies are my preference. And so therefore that's generally what I will use is a high quality um, potentiometer. Now, since we're building a Strat style guitar, if you're using all single coils, you're gonna wanna get a 250K resistance potentiometer. If you're throwing in a humbucker into the mix, you may wanna take this up to be a 500K. 500K is a little bit more transparent a 250K provides a little bit darker colorization uh, to the pickup sound. Now on a standard Stratocaster, it uses a five-way pickup selector switch, and there's standard ones out there. Again, there's import versions. Um, there's other versions that, that are US made that are high quality. So get what you think is best. Five positions is standard. Um, there's also things like are called the super switch, uh, which is a Fender product. And the Super Switch allows you to wire it in different ways to get other than standard pickup combinations. So if that interests you, you may wanna look into that. A company I've standardized on for pickup selector switch is a company called Freeway. A Freeway, this is a blade style switch for a Stratocaster style guitar that happens to be a 10-way. There's two separate banks of five positions so you get standard five positions on a, on a traditional Stratocaster, and then it has an upper bank that, that the, the blade clicks into, and then it offers different options that you can kind of choose from. I typically use series in the one, three, and five position, and then in the two and the four positions has things like the two outer um, pickups in parallel and all three pickups in parallel, just to give additional tonal choices but certainly a standard five-way switch is more than sufficient to build your Stratocaster style guitar. Okay, you're gonna need guitar knobs. Typical Stratocaster is gonna have three guitar knobs. I recommend to you the Maximum Guitar Works BTS series guitar knobs that are available in six different coatings. Why do I recommend them to you? Um, because they're mine and I think they're the best. In fact, I think anyone that's purchased these knobs for me, if you're watching this video, write in the comments and just tell them what you think of these knobs. All the feedback that I've ever gotten is how incredible these knobs are. These are patented. I've received a patent on my BTS and my BTT, which is typically used in the tele configurations, uh, knobs because of the features that I have built in that I've done a video in the past, go back and look at it. I'm not gonna rehash it. Um, but because of the features and the ergonomics and the quality of the workmanship and material of these things is second to none that you'll ever see. So uh, I recommend those, but any standard knobs will certainly uh, do the job for you. For your tone knobs, and if you're gonna choose to use a treble bleed, you're gonna need capacitors for that. Now I'll go into that in much more detail when we get to that episode, but you can certainly look it up and figure out which ones are standard that you might need. And then in the episode where I talk about this, I'll talk about how to know what type of capacitor you have and what impact it has on the potentiometers and, and how you may or may not want to alter the standard values based upon what you're after. You're gonna need some wire, some guitar wire. Standard wire, plastic coated, um, is gonna be fine. You've also got the cloth wire, which is more vintage. 
you cut the wire, you just push back the cloth, you solder it up. My personal favorite, again, not required, but is special wire that has a PTFE Teflon coating and the wire is multi-strand 22 gauge silver coated in there. This is just the top of the line, nicest wire to work with and for performance. However, standard wire is perfectly fine for building your first Stratocaster guitar. You'll need to shield the electronics cavity in order to get the best possible performance and the least amount of noise out of your single coil guitar. Uh, you can just purchase this uh, online pretty much at all your whatever, eBay, Amazon, or such like that. I would look to make sure that the copper foil, the adhesive on the back of the copper foil is also conductive, okay? Those are the qualities that you want because you will have to kind of overlap some of these sheets. And if the glue is not conductive, uh, then you may not have complete continuity. You could also get larger sheets for filling in larger spaces from all of your main online providers, all parts, WD Music, probably many, many more places offer that. Um, and that's an option for you. You could also get aluminum shielding. Um, aluminum shielding uh, works. I find that the copper is a little bit better because I can actually solder a ground wire directly to the copper in the cavity in order to provide better continuity of that ground. Uh, so that's an option I'd like to have, so therefore I go with that. You can also use that conductive paint that you've seen many people use. And that is an easy way to certainly do it. I just don't prefer it as much because again, I'm limited. I can't really ground directly uh, to it. I have to kind of figure out a way to do it with you know, mounting a screw and then through that screw, I could put a ground wire and things like this. The copper, I can solder directly to it and that's why I like it so much. You're gonna need a set of strap buttons for sure. Uh, instead of the standard ones, I use the Dunlop strap locks only because I prefer strap locks. Uh, and the Dunlop ones, just the button alone can still accept a standard strap if somebody does not want to install the strap lock me mechanism to their, to their strap, you can still use them. So you have a little bit more versatility with the Dunlop version. All right, strings. You probably already have a bunch of strings. You'll have to figure out what kind that you like, uh, what sizes you like. I typically install 1046s and I use Diodario. Um, for my setups, I use the XLs. And for my final, final setup, going out the door to the customer, I use NYXLs. I think they're really, really high quality string, but this is a personal preference. The only thing I will say to you is you need one set for the setup and you need one set for the final, uh, getting the guitar out the door or before it's ready to be played. So we'll do test fits and things like that, and that's why you need a set of strings that probably is gonna get wasted in the end. There's a lot of optional things in my class. Um, things like the decorative top, a drop top as it's called. Um, that's an optional thing. You don't need that to build a Stratocaster style guitar. The alder body one that I'm gonna use here is gonna probably be an opaque painted uh, body which, which looks really cool. I kind of gravitate to the old muscle car colors. You know, the candies, the uh, the, the metallics, the, the flakes, uh, and certainly some of the classic surf greens and, you know, and things like the classic uh, fender colors are, are just absolutely beautiful. So you can do that or you can use a drop top in order to get that highly figured with a more transparent, either tinted or natural um, clear finishes on top of those. That's an optional thing you can consider. Other optional things might be binding. Not found as common on Stratocasters, more on Telecasters, but it's a pretty cool look sometimes. I mean, you could get some perloid, some black, some cream. Uh, this is actually celluloid, not plastic. It's the original plastic. It's actually celluloid. It's a little bit uh, on the flammable side, uh, so it's a little harder to come by, and sometimes they charge you hazardous material fees uh, for shipping that but there's lots of different options. I may or may not do binding on one of these guitars. Uh, if I do, certainly it'll be part of the lesson. The biggest thing to talk about when we talk about 
optional stuff on a guitar is finishing. This is a topic that is all its own. It is so extensive and there are so many YouTube videos of people doing them all different ways with all different types of materials. I'll be glad to talk to you about the finishes that I use and why I use it and techniques and the equipment that I use, uh, but I will warn you that I use pretty high-end equipment and not all of you will have that capability and I really don't want you to feel like you have to have the high-end equipment in order to do great finishes, but the better the equipment, the less frustrations you will have in getting good results. Let me just leave it at that for now. But it's something that you have to start thinking about on week one and not week 15 of what you're going to do to the finish process. It could be a hand rubbed oil, it could be a lacquer based, it could be polyurethane, it could be other, it could be a UV based curing system, one part, two parts. Um, it, it could be many different things and you really need to just kind of get in there and do research and figure out what you like and what you think you have the equipment and the capability to use and begin steering towards that direction and come up with the best plan you can for that. Okay, and I will tell you that this series is gonna be based upon using my template system. You can use any templates, you can make your own templates, um, and there's many ways to do that. But I've invested a lot of time to reinvent the template system, and I have what I believe to be the best template system available anywhere. It guarantees alignment, which helps guarantee success, although there's always a way for us to mess things up. Um, and it provides additional safety margin than, that I've seen on any other template system that you can purchase anywhere I've seen. So I'm gonna be using this template system that has hardened steel drilling bushings at a, as alignment points uh, between the fretboard and the neck itself. I'm gonna be using the exact same auto alignment system on my fret slotting templates that I make. Uh, and we're gonna show you how to use all those. And then in the guitar itself, I'm gonna use all of my templates that were painstakingly tweaked to as much as possible as classic 60s era Fender Stratocaster. Some things were improved upon, refined a little bit, um, but, uh, but they're gonna be extremely accurate for you. Uh, cover plates, pick guards, the body itself um, has handle grips that actually bolt through threaded inserts that I haven't actually installed at this point in time but this is what provides you the safety when you're doing a one and three quarter inch chunk of wood on the router table all at once. This will save your fingers by having paddle mounted grips onto your template. And the side benefit that I discovered after my students started using this new version was that the cuts they were getting, as long as they followed the correct directions, were much better because there's better stability when you have a better grip on that piece of wood. So we're gonna be using that and this Stratocaster single coil set um, has the back template to figure out where that belly cut should go. If you're using a spoke wheel, it's got that. It's got the tremolo um, on there and then certainly a, a one with a neck plate and all of the electronics cavities and I will take you through the entire process of how to do this uh, using my templates. I have these templates available and again like I said before you want to support what I'm doing and the hours I'm putting in in order to to make these videos for my students and consequently for you then buy my templates. If, if that's in the budget buy my templates, that will help me and it will help you to have better results and a safer um, operation for sure. If you don't want the standard triple S, we can do an HSS, we can do an HSH, we can do all different versions of those templates. I've also recently developed a different Stratocaster template set uh, that I've never really formally announced. And this one is designed for no pick guard. So this is if you're using that highly decorative piece of wood i.e. this really cool master grade flamed maple top on this drop top I'm going to be using. I will use no pick guard and these are all size dimensions for standard Stratocaster style pickups to fit in there with uh, not a lot of excess room 
and for then the electronics cavities to become in from the back of it and that's where templates like this come in that give all of the things. Now one thing I do with my templates also is you will see notes all over it. One of the common things I was getting with my students at school is how deep is that neck pocket supposed to be again? Uh, how deep am I supposed to make the electronics cavity? I would be asked this like 15 times a semester at least, you know, and it, it really was unnecessary if they were just kind of taking notes as I would go along. But when I built these templates, I decided that let me put a lot of those notes on the template so when they go to use the template, they don't have to ask me, they can just read. And that will give them the information. So as much of those notes as I felt were pertinent to the construction are laser etched into the templates themselves. Again, all of these templates have the hardened steel drilling bushings that, that are used for alignment purposes so that I can go from this to my neck pocket template and there's always dead perfect alignment without any second guessing or tweaking or shifting or having to fix later because it was slightly off. So all of these things have that. So I highly recommend that as you go through this series with me that you use my templates, but the information is here. You know, if it's not in the budget, use whatever you have available to you and do the best job you can. Remember, everything that you do, it's about starting with that attitude of excellence. And that's what I'm gonna take you through and I'm gonna teach you the best I can and you just do the best you can with your time, your talents and your resources and you will be building a Stratocaster guitar with excellence. See you in the next video.